What's up guys, CP Marty here back with another video and today we're continuing our data series of videos with backups. Yep, probably one of the most super boring things to actually cover, but is absolutely critical in our data-driven world. Now, in our last video, we talked about, right there, the three, two, ones of data storage, and we did talk about slightly backups, but we didn't really go into how to set them up on your computer, and that is what we're gonna be covering here today. How to set them up, some tips and tricks to think about, and really just get your computer backed up, because let's face it, Data loss really, really sucks. Now, before we do go ahead and jump into it, today's just a very simple guide. So if you're looking at like raid arrays and servers and that kind of stuff, do stay tuned as that's coming down the line. But today it's all simple and just simply getting those backups running. Now, in order to actually get things all up and running, you'll need a couple of things before we do jump into this. First off, we'll need an external drive of some type, preferably a non-SSD based one. Because backups is all about writing data to a drive, if we have an SSD, there's a higher likelihood of failure because SSDs don't so much like being written to, whereas mechanical drives doesn't really matter because it's just a mechanical head. Now, yes, SSDs are going to be faster for backups, but they're not going to last as long and they're not going to be as reliable in some cases as mechanical hard drives. Now, for backups of most systems, I generally speaking recommend a 4 terabyte desktop drive as desktop drives are pretty reliable and 4 terabytes is plenty of space for today's modern world. However, if you're running a smaller SSD, maybe a 120 gig drive or 256 that you're looking at backing up, then sure a 1 terabyte drive can be more than enough as well 120 gigs into 1 terabyte, there's still quite a bit of backups you can actually do. And we'll touch on everything that we need and again, Everything that we talk about will be linked down below. So let's kick things off over on the Mac side with some backups here. Now, Mac OS themselves have a very decent built-in backup utility that's super simple and just works. And also too has a ton of support from getting files back to full system rebuilds. Uh, Mac OS's backup solution, in my opinion, is probably the best file backup system that's built into a system, period. Mac OS users don't really have to go digging around the internet for a good backup tool because Time Machine just gets it done. Sure, it may not have the same granular control as some other options, but man, again, I really do like it. So to actually set up Time Machine, super simple. Open up system preferences, navigate over to the Time Machine area, and then we can select our drive, select the backup, follow the wizard, it's done. Literally takes two minutes, if that, to set things up, and it is ready to go. Do keep in mind, in most cases when you are setting up a backup like this, you will want to go ahead and have a blank drive because, well, it needs all that space we can have. Now, once we set things up, it's pretty simple. If it's a laptop, leave it connected to power and leave it running, or if it's a desktop, just let it sit there and do the initial backup. Do keep in mind, initial backups will always take longer. However, after that, it will generally speaking take a lot less, especially over on the Mac side. That being said, let's jump over to the Windows side. And well, there are a lot more of different options and things get much more difficult. Ignoring the fact that there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of backup solutions you can download from the internet, Windows itself has like four different options for doing essentially the same thing. And it's super, super fragmented. For instance, on Windows 10, we have both Windows 10 and Windows 7 Backup and Restore with the modern UI tool or the classic uh, control panel tool. And there's also two other options. For instance, we can do like system image backups and other types of backups. It's kind of all over the place. And really, I wish Windows would come up or Microsoft rather would come up with one solution, just like what we have over on the Mac side. However, a lot of us here today are running Windows 10, so we are going to be focusing on that. But the Windows 7 Backup and Restore tool is found on obviously Windows 7 and also to Windows 8, so you can use it just there. The only real difference between the modern UI kind of tool and the Windows 7 one is the Windows 7 has nicer looking uh, control than the Windows 10 one. Basically, it's just different UI, basically does the same thing. So for us here today, we're going to go ahead and set things up and open up the settings and go over to the Backups tab and we'll see the modern UI version of this backup tool. Now, like last time, we're going to select our drive fill out the wizard, and boom, we're done. Now, sure, the modern UI wizard is really, really fast. Again, really setting up backups should take no more than 60 seconds, um, and it's pretty much ready to go. Now, just like over on the Mac side, if we leave it as standard, well, it's just gonna do a pretty simple backup, which is good for many users. However, a lot of us do like some more granular control, so you can jump in the settings, change how frequent the backups are, what kind of files you're backing up, and all those types of things. By default, this will back up the C drive, and just like 
work all over on our Mac side. If it's a laptop, we'll leave it plugged into power or a desktop, we'll just leave it on and the first backup will go through. However, a lot of people, myself included, do have a lot of drives plugged into our computers. So do keep in mind, just because you've got a backup going doesn't mean all the drives are being backed up. You do need to make sure that they are being backed up. And also do keep in mind, if you've got one four terabyte drive to do your backups to and like two two terabyte drives internally, you're gonna run out of room really, really quick. So do keep in mind that if you're gonna be backing up all the drives on your PC to have enough backup storage. And then finally, we have a backup solution that works for just about any operating system, and that is pretty simple cloud backup. Now, yes, I do really like having an on-site backup and an off-site backup, two different ones, but let's face it, not all of us can go ahead and drop some extra money on an extra drive if we're really not going to be using it that much. Totally understand there. And it can be really handy to have your backups in the cloud because if you're out and about, you can easily pull them down. And I'm sure if you've checked out this channel for any amount of time, we're going to be talking about Backblaze right here. For me, I use Backblaze on my Mac, on my PC, just about anywhere I can, I throw a copy of Backblaze on there because it is so so simple to have a ton of backups and this is coming back to the Windows option if you've got a ton of drives let's face it you just bought like four four terabyte drives you don't want to buy another four four terabyte drives just to back up those originals backblaze is going to save you a ton of cash right here so in our example right here we're just going to simply download the installer install it and log into well our little account right here that you would have set up over on the website and usually it just starts. Now, we do need to go ahead and do some fine grain controlling here. Uh, for instance, we're gonna go ahead and open up the control panel and we're gonna go ahead and make sure we have the correct drive selected, as we can see right here. Then we're gonna go over to the exclusions list and check the excluded data types. Now, for most end users, whatever's there by default is pretty much fine. But for me, a bit more into tech, I have things like ISO files and VMDKs and those types of things that I do want backed up. So I'll go ahead and make sure that this list is complete blank. Or on the flip side, if you don't want to back up your MOV videos, but you want to back up your pictures, you can easily just add MOV to this list and it will not back up any file type well, file. So it's a really powerful tool here that Backblaze does go ahead and offer to exclude and include different parts of file type. So you can have a play around here, but Backblaze is a great option to go ahead and use. And no, for the record, Backblaze is not a sponsor. They don't really have anything to do with us other than like a link that I'm going to put down in the description box that they didn't really have anything to do with. I just went on their website, grabbed the link, and it is down below. But guys, that's really, really it. It's a pretty simple process to go ahead and do backups, and I can guarantee you that setting up a backup is gonna save you at some point. But setting up a backup is just one part of the story. Making sure that backup works is the most important part. It's a simple thing to do, and all you need to do is like move a file to another location and see how long it takes to get that file back. But I've seen it time and time again, where people talk about how great their backup solutions are, how how redundant it is, it's got like 10 layers of redundancy and all that kind of stuff. But when push comes to shove and that file goes down, I've seen a lot of people who are really happy to say how great their storage is just to completely freak out when a drive goes ahead and dies. So once you've gone ahead and set up your backup process, do some tests, delete a file, remove a file, move it into another location so you don't actually lose the file itself and just see how long it takes to use that backup that you got to get up and running again. In theory, it should take less than two minutes to go ahead and get your files back. Otherwise, it's probably not gonna be the best solution. And if you are looking at mission critical devices, then it should be in the matter of seconds in terms of redundancy right there. But everybody's expectations are different. For me, if I have more than one second of outage, I'm super mad, but that's just me. Anyway, guys, let me know what you use for backups down in that comment sections. I'll also to leave everything we talked about here today in the description box if you wanna go ahead and check out the drives or the software or whatever be linked down below. Guys, thanks all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.